Hi everyone. Good morning. Um, this is Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue for um, coming to you for Cricket Chat. This morning's Cricket Chat. It's Thursday. I haven't even turned my calendar. It's Thursday, um, the 9th of July, and I wanted to talk to you about um, joy projects on your on your explorer or maker and then also um the much requested label making like return address labels good morning so i'm hoping to get some people on uh, i see christy and michelle good morning and jennifer hi everyone so glad to um see you this morning hi constance nice to see you hi Lori joe Lori Joe, you wake up early like me um, because I saw you commenting or liking some of my other posts. Hi, Wanda. So, um, and Lisa, I want to give people a few minutes to come on and say their good mornings and I could say my good mornings. But while I do that, I'll just um, remind everyone that this is Cricket Chat and it is a daily live um, video on Facebook and it's run by uh, me and my channel, Miss Rita to the Rescue. Um, and we come here every day, Monday through Friday at nine o'clock. And then we also do date night on Saturday night, which is at seven o'clock and they're all on um, Facebook. And then we usually, I usually post unless there's a problem with the video. Um, I post the videos, I repost the videos on YouTube. So if you're listening from YouTube and want to be part of the live experience, then um, you can do that, but on Facebook, okay? So um, hi from San Diego. So it's really early there for you, Jamie, yeah? Um, so um, yeah, hi Penny, thank you for sharing and Jessica. Good morning to everyone. Um, it's so nice to have you. And I just can't, yesterday I had somebody come to my house, um, some people from a local uh, community farm and they were planting, hi, central Arkansas. Very nice. Oh, hi, hi, Donna. Um, a Reverend Donna, I should say. Um, um, so I had some people come and I couldn't believe how much I missed seeing real live people. <laughs> so it's so wonderful to have you all join me um, in this morning uh, cricket chat. And I really feel like I'm with you together. So um, let's get started. So, you know, I... I have some folks that always make comments on YouTube, and one of them is named Loretta. Um, so Loretta, hi Loretta. So yesterday she sent me a message saying um, she has she has the joy, and I I think she has the other machine as well, other some other machine as well, um, and she wanted to point out about how there is a difference between uh, joy projects and the maker or explore projects. <coughs> Excuse me. And in finding projects and, and images even um, in design space. I don't, good morning, Shelly. Good morning, Eileen. Wow, we're getting a lot of people from, from the hot part of the country. It's Nice to see you all this morning. Uh, I hope you're in air conditioned comfort. Um, so, so um, she had mentioned, Loretta had mentioned, you know, I'm learning to sort of switch over so I can see what's in there. Now, personally, I don't like the way that they've done this. And I have um, told, you know, the folks at Cricket that I don't think that, that, um, projects should be um, sort of sorted by machines because a lot of people like me have more than one machine. Um, I think they did this for the fact that they want to make joy, the joy, as easy to um, use as possible. And by limiting projects like that cannot be done, such as print and cut, um, which cannot be done, or even things that have um, scoring, they've limited them. And let me show you how to sort of trick the system and get around that. So if you're a person that has both 
uh, a joy and another machine, or you just kind of you're interested in seeing what the joy can do, um, which is what I'm going to show you today is uh, how to get to the joy projects. So this is uh, these are my these are my projects, and you can see up here I've got some labels that I've been working on, um, and so as I started to. Um, make labels I got interested in knowing about the the joy labels now if you are are a joy owner you might know about this it's called smart label and it goes directly in without a mat and it goes directly into the joy machine and this is not recommended for the other machines but um, I have heard people using this but they still have to put it on a mat because um, of the width okay but um, then there are other things as well um, that you can use in the joy for making labels. But so, uh, you know, like the, the spice labels. So let me show you what I did this morning. So here are the spice labels, which are really cool. And I wanted to get my hands on them and see if that they would cut on um, sticker paper, which um, it, it did kind of cut through it a little bit. I cut this on washi setting and I probably should have done it on a uh, washi with light pressure. But if you're interested, this, these, this project is only available to people who have the joy until now. I'm going to show you how to trick it out. So, um, so here I am. I'm, I'm looking at uh, a project that actually came from the joy. But let me just start new. Um, if you want to look at projects, there are a lot, a lot of projects in um, Cricut Design Space, and some people don't often go there but it's right here where it says projects it's under templates it's between templates and images so um this is a place you should you should go to for inspiration um for new projects that maybe you haven't done before and uh it's a really great place to go to now what i found here is that there are lots of great categories too so if you're looking for say we we work on cards a lot so if you're looking for some inspiration on cards um you can see that there are quite a few cards here and uh lots of different holidays and what have you so there's lots and lots and mm, i would say about half of them are uh part of access and you know they're part of access when they have that a um, so i generally will stick with the access projects unless i know that i purchased for instance i i do have hello kitty um, as one of my images so i might um, go there and look at the hello kitty but all you need to do is when you're in this project area is you just need to click on it and it will tell you all the stuff that you need to know um <coughs> oh, I have a little, I'm sorry, I have a little frog in my throat this morning. So this is a, <clears throat> this is a Anna Griffin um, Christmas card. And I was looking at it for our date night this Saturday. And you'll see when you look, when you open this up down here, you'll actually see where the images and fonts came from. So it, and in this case, it's showing that I did purchase these and also they're part of access. Okay. And there are all kinds of other things like FAQs and videos on how to work with paper and all that great stuff. So they sort of handholds you as you're doing it. Now, remember from this point, you can either hit make it, which is here. That's the green button. That's going to take you directly to your mats without any kind of customization or any time being in Cricut, um, in, in the canvas. Okay. Um, I generally use this button, which is customized because I always have to customize everything. Um, and then I click customize and it brings it into my canvas might take a minute or two. Um, but here it is. Here's my card from Anna Griffin. And I know that these are free because, um, they're access 
images. And um, it's really, it's a really great way to kind of get started on a project when you, you know, you kind of, you're like, I need some Christmas cards or I need some ideas for a banner or whatever. That's where projects come in really in just in handy. So um, I want to encourage you to go there and look at all the different categories, see? And there's Halloween, Infusible Ink. There's even stuff for like the knife blade, if you have a knife blade, um, and wreaths, and, and also some of the designers like Martha Stewart, and I think they have an Anna. Yep, they have an Anna Griffin. They used to have a Leah. I don't see Leah uh, Griffith, but she should be there. Riley Blake is there. So anyway, so this is the project area. But one of the things that I noticed is if I have my machine set on Maker, I get different results in my projects than if I have my machine set for joy. And so sometimes when I'm telling people, oh, go to the projects or go to the images. It's the same for images as well. If you go to images and I, and I say, all right, look up this images, um, it might not be available to you depending on the machine that you're, you're using. So to change your machine, um, you simply have to go up here. I don't know if it's even in the, here we go, so here. Um, to change your machine up here, you see it says maker with this little down arrow. Watch what happens when I switch it to joy. Totally different set of projects. Um, and so if you say want to do uh, index, these, um, what do they call them? Insert cards, you get a different set. And also you'll notice here that there are projects such as just going for the insert cards. And here you go. Now, <clears throat> in some cases, like the insert cards, this is going to come up and um, you cannot customize them. So let's just click on this one, you'll see down the bottom, it's just make it. This is what I was referring to, I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before, when I was saying that when we make index, uh, I keep calling it index cards, insert cards, um, you can't customize them. And <clears throat> this is what I was talking about. I'm set for joy. I want to do this make a wish card, but there's no customization. So I cannot put um, a sentiment inside of this card, I have to trick my joy out and do the sentiment separately. It can be done, but it's a two-step process, okay? So, um, so you need to know that there are some projects of joy that you cannot customize. So you can't like decide, okay, I'm gonna um, bring this into my maker for my maker or for my explore or I'm going to be able to customize this it requires it's it's doable but it's 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 doable to customize it but you have to trick out the system um but also you couldn't pull this in just to your canvas that's what customization does pulls it into your canvas right but <clears throat> some other projects and that includes uh labels so here this is under joy smart labels and what i found out is that you can actually um having your machine set to joy that's up here um you can actually choose these projects and let me show you this one this is the one i showed you earlier the spice jars um is there is a customization here so if you happen to be in the project area with joy chosen and you see customization you know that you can trick out basically this this project but if it's no customization you can't do it so that's what i did i chose customization um and that's that message is just for what i had on there so um, this is on my on my canvas now. So I'm going to go and change my machine again up here to my maker, which is, is there. Now, if I have my joy and I could do these on the joy and I could use the smart label, but if you don't have the joy or you want to work on your maker, you can use um, 
this sticker paper. Remember we bought this sticker paper at Amazon and we were doing print then cut stickers. And I mentioned um, that Amazon isn't the only place. There's actually online, online labels.com has great selection of labels as well. So, um, right. So, so Terry, if you only have a joy, then having your, your machine set to joy, having your having your design space set to joy it's perfect for you because then you're not uh, choosing a project that you can't do with the joy so um but for people that might have other machines and a joy um this is a great way to pull up projects that uh otherwise they wouldn't have access to so um so there so there's that. So anyway, so I wanted to do these spice labels and I wanted to do them um, on my maker. And so I wanted to just show you, this is how you can pull that project in. The same holds true for um, images. So if you have your, your um, let's, let's go to Let's go to image sets. I think this would be helpful. So if you have your um, machine set for the maker, we end up with 3,172 image sets. But if we choose the joy, I wanna see under image sets, if it's going to come up with anything or a lesser amount, I'm pretty sure that it will come up with a lesser amount, but I might be wrong. So let's check that out. Um, or perhaps it's only on when you do a basic image search. Maybe that's it. Um, but it's taking a while to show up. I don't know why. Come on, hurry up. This happens with live videos, of course. Let's go back to the basic engine. So let's type, we'll set our machine for Maker and let's type in, I wanna go here. Browse all images. So this is browse all images. Oh. Okay, so I'm gonna type in Flamingo. And I have it set for Maker. So I come up with, I don't know why this is not going back to my, hmm. No, oh. Really? Um, Dorothy is saying that Design Space is having problem with loading this morning. So that might be what I'm experiencing. So um, perhaps I should just uh, just go on and do something else. Um, but, you know, know that by changing your machine, you can uh, change, you can change what shows up. I just had to put this in here. You can change what shows up under projects and also under images, okay? So <clears throat> one of the, the biggest things that I get requests for is labels and not just labels for spices, but um, address labels. So I want to show you uh, what I came up with. I actually made a bunch of labels yesterday. This isn't my real address, obviously, but... Um, as I don't live on Main Street, but these are um, image labels that I actually cut on the wrong setting. I cut it on sticker paper setting. And if you remember from the print then cut um, video that we did, episode that we did on print then cut, um, if you cut this on sticker, on my machine, if I cut on sticker paper, which is a very thin sticker paper, it doesn't, uh, it cuts both the top and the backing. So I wanted it to show you um, how I did this, how I created the label, okay? <clears throat> so let's go here. This is something I was working on before. So I wanted to, um, I wanted to create a return address label, which is what I did here. And um, all I did is I created I went and looked for a label, and here are some other labels that you could use, like this one and this one. I made them really big, okay? Um, and you can you can make them smaller to be uh, for return address, or maybe you want an address label, and this size is pretty good. Maybe it's a little bit big, but it's a three-inch height um, label. So, um, so basically, first you have to go 
grab the label. And then you're gonna go to images and grab the label. So you just type in label and you'll get back, hopefully, um, yes, okay. So you get back all of these labels. There's tons of labels, um, just like the basic labels, and with all kinds of designs on them. If you're looking for, you know, just kind of a rounded one, or you want something that's shaped more like this or that, that you have a bunch that you can choose from. And so uh, you can just sort of go through, and I went through, and I just picked a, a bunch of different labels. Now, the the um, more basic uh, an image is probably better for this project. So for instance, this one here that has two colors means that you're going to be cutting out two layers, the green layer and then this off-white layer. So I would, if I were making return address labels, I'd probably choose one that has just one color, unless you want to fuss with layers for your labels. So for me, I am on um, an email, like a, a, a card exchange for corgis at Christmas, and I have to make my own label. So um, I want something simple that I can replicate, and then also I can take my my list in with me if I wanted to not hand write them. I could take my list and, and populate the uh, the labels, but I generally use my own return address labels, and I usually put a corgi picture on them. All right, <laughs> so um, so I would choose something simple like this, and then bring it into um, Design Space, which is what I did here. So here are a couple of just examples that, and you can move these using that circular thing if you wanted to. Um, so I started off with this really basic label. Let me get closer so you can see. And what I did was I put a um, text box in there. And I want to show you how to do that because a lot of people don't use the text boxes and um, they're really fun to play with. And this is a perfect opportunity to use them. So having a text box in there doesn't mean that you're going to write with it, but for this project, yes, you would write with it. So let me show you what you do. You're going to go over to text, the big T, okay, and you hit that. And you'll see on the bottom here, this is where I'm going to add my text. It's not where my text will appear. When I type, my text will appear on the uh, canvas. This is just the place where you can change the text. So um, let's put in, oh, I don't know, um, John Smith, one, Maple Drive, and Boston, Massachusetts, okay? Oh, two, okay. So you'll notice as I'm doing this, this is my text. And clearly, that is not going to fit into my little uh, label, is it? Not even the bigger one. Um, so uh, what we have to do, and plus it's a cut file. So what we need to do is we need to ch make some changes here. The first thing that I do when I'm changing it, I want it to write with a pen, is I go up here to my font, and then I look over here to style, and I usually choose writing. Now this font is called Cricut Sans. I use it all the time because it's pretty basic, but you can f play around, you know, you can look around for the right font for you. Um, but I just generally just use this for most of my, um, <clears throat> most of my text, um, that I, that I do. And then if I want to make changes, I do it afterwards. But so seriously, what it does is it changes it from the cut file to the writing file, but still it's seriously too big. So to make it smaller, you're going to use these little arrows and you're going to go like this and just make it smaller like this. Isn't that great? Um, or, you know, you, what you can also do is if you don't like the um 
the space between the lines, you can change this, or you can change the space between the letters. I happen to like the space between the letters, and the space between the lines doesn't bother me, but what I really do like is I like to see something that is centered. So I usually go to alignment here, and I choose center. And then my text is centered and I can put it anywhere I like. And this way I could also put like a little flourish here or writing. Or even if I wanted to, I could turn these into print and cut and, and do it that way. You can certainly do it that way. There are right now, just so you know, there are some problems with print and cut. So <clears throat> you might want to consider that if you want to do a print and cut um, project. I'm also changing the size of my little label. I think I might change it to about an inch high. That seems like an average for, <clears throat> oh, I'm all stuffy today. Um, it seems like an average. So, so even by making this smaller, it does cause a little problems. I could make it smaller if I wanted to, or I could ungroup this two lines. That's something we learned, I think it was last week, and that's going up here to advanced and ungroup two lines. And what that does is it makes each of these lines be independent of the other. So you can create a text box with multiple lines and then ungroup two lines so you can change the space between each line. Uh, which is a great little feature. Now, once you do that, though, you have to remember that your address is um, not working all as a group. So if you made a change here um, with the font or the size of the font, it will not show up on the first and second of the lines. Yes, it's called kerning. That's correct. And um, from what I understand, so Constance says the space between the lines and the letters is called kerning. That is the official term. I don't um, use it too much, but it, it is something that they are consistently working on um, in design space. So I'm hoping that they are going to make changes um, there. <clears throat> is ungrounds to available on the iPad. I believe it is. I don't have my iPad here with me this morning, but I do believe it is constant. Ungrouping. Ungrouping to the lines. I believe it is, but <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to have to check and get back to you on that because I don't really know for sure. <clears throat> Sorry. So by ungrouping two lines, um, you can then move your text into this space. And if you wanted to make the name larger, you could do that. You could change the actual font even. Um, and so for instance, if you wanted to change John Smith, the name to say something that was a little more fancy, um, you could do that and choose something that looks like a script. Um, let me see. I'm trying to look for one that I like that's sort of like a scripty thing. I suppose this will do. So, um, so I can have John Smith. Now, here's an example of what Constance is saying. Kerning is that, um, it looks, it doesn't look right because the letters are not attached to each other. Let me see if I can find a different one because this one's kind of small. Um, so a lot of times with the script fonts, uh, the letters, they don't attach themselves correctly in design space. So that means that you have to, um, oops, hold on. I'm going to change this out. I think that should change this a little bit. Um, so... I'm looking for, I'll, I'll filter it, which is another thing you can do, and choose writing. And this will only give me the, um, the fonts that are writing type fonts. Okay, you guys, okay. Shh, shh, quiet there. Mm, sorry, sorry about the dog. 
Um, okay, so let's find a writing type of a font that we like and that I can show you how to change the lettering. Um, this one's nice. Oh, this one is actually written in. This is, must be, is this the Carly sketch? It is. <laughs> okay, I don't want that one then. Um, here, this one. Is that the one I already chose? Okay, so here's John Smith. Um, that's, you know, the name that we're using for the, for the uh, label. But you see how the M, the I, the T, they're not connected. Where if you were doing writing, you would connect these letters and it would look better. Um, and so how to do that? Well, you're going to go up to advanced here and you're going to choose ungroup two letters. Okay. And what that is going to do is take all of your letters so that you can move them independently. So for Smith, I want the M. Think of when you're writing. Um, generally speaking, you would connect the M to the I, right? So I'm going to take the I and I'm going to touch it close so it looks like, and I don't know if I can go any bigger. Yeah, I can. Um, so it looks like it's touching, um, right? So like that. And then the T would also be sort of touching like this. Maybe the H would be independent. I don't know. It depends, I think, on your writing, but you could also make it like that. I don't know. For me, I would probably leave it separate. Smith. But over here on John, I definitely would uh, attach the H to the N. But see, you have to be very careful and make it look as if they're it's like you're writing. I'm not sure if I would have the O attach the H. Um, the way I write, I would because I would have a loop in here, but maybe I wouldn't. Um, I don't know. Let's see how that looks. Nah, it doesn't look right. So we're going to move it back over. Now, once you make it to look exactly the way you want it to, maybe the H, I don't know. What do you think? Um... Yes, it's under advance. I still don't like the T connected to the H. Okay, so so this to me looks good. It looks as if somebody hand wrote it. I, I'm undecided about the T and the H being connected, but you can make that call for yourself. So um, once I get it all the way that, that I want it, I do need to make sure they're all attached, each of the... Um, of the letters are attached to each other, especially where I made them touch. So I am going to actually cor um, corral or, you know, like select all of the name and I'm going to attach them. Now, here we go. I probably, I yeah, attach. So here we go here where the H and the N are connected. I can see a little piece and I don't like that. So I want to go back and change it. So I need to undo. Remember undo is up here. Um, and I need to, oh, I have to keep going back to undo. And I'm going to move. Is this going to let me do it? Mm -mm -mm. Is that it? Smith. Yeah. Um, I want it to touch, but I don't want it to overlap like this because I don't want it to show. So you're going to really have to use your, you know, up close um, and you're good. Here we go. That to me, that looks better. So, okay, I'm going to group it together and I'm going to attach it. And then now that I am uh, done with the name, I'm going to have to make it smaller, but I, I made it bigger so that I could work on it, okay? So I'm going to put it, let's say, here, and then I'm going to take um, his address, one Maple Drive, and to me it looks kind of big, so I think I might make it smaller, and then his city and state zip code, which I might make smaller. I might keep that way. I don't know. To me, that seems like a really 
I think that that looks good, but maybe I will make the Boston a little bit smaller. Let's try that. Just so that his name really stands out on the label. All right. I'll move this down. Remember, we ungroup to lines to do this and to create the um, the script font, we ungrouped to letters, okay? Hi, Emmy, welcome. All right, so this looks good to me. I don't know about you, but I kind of like this. So I wanna see how it's going to look when I, um, when I put it on a sticker paper. So I need to select everything and I need to attach because then it allows the all of that writing to be on that back label. Now, if you wanted to use print then cut, and you can, um, you need to flatten, okay? Flatten basically takes all of the um, layers and, and makes them useful to uh, to the printing aspect. So, and flatten is down here, right on the bottom, next to contour, which isn't even showing. It's it's like shaded out. Um, okay. Let me just hide the rest of these things, and we'll go ahead and we'll um, cut them out so you can see. Now, personally. Um, I would, once I got something I liked, I'd probably do a whole bunch of these, um, but I will test on just one and that's what we'll do. So, so let's go ahead and send our label to the maker and you see it comes up on a one mat and I do have some sticker paper and I'm going to put it in my maker today. So I put the sticker paper up here in the corner. It's just a piece of, you know, actually cut part of the sticker paper. I don't really need, but if I wanted to make like, I don't know, 20 of these, this is where I would do it. Over here under project copies, hit 20 and apply, and it will show up on this. Now, my piece is smaller than the way that they have it grouped. My piece is only a little over five inches and 11 inches long. To get the word to show on the label, you have to attach, okay? You have to attach them, um, Emmy. So, okay, so obviously these, these labels here are not gonna fit on this piece. So I could choose to um, use a big piece, but you know, I'm a frugal person. So I think if I were going to make 20 of these, I would probably move them all here, which you can do by hand on this middle screen. I may or may not, yep, I do have enough room to do all of these, okay? But if you change your mind and you're like, oh darn, I just wanna see how one looks, you can also go up here and change the project copies back to one. And here you go. It's one label on the mat, okay? I will also mention this just as an aside, but here you can change your material size. I don't often do this except for when I want to cut on specifically something on eight and a half by 11, and I don't want like two items to cut on the same page. Like it's to, uh, to actually separate them by mats. And there's another way around that, but, um, but you can change material size and there's quite a few selections here. So if you decide to say, do a 12 by 24 inch, if you have something that large, you can change that and it will change it to a larger mat. And the rest of the time, if, it, if you change it to like eight and a half by 11, it will show you the space. So here's your eight and a half by 11 sheet. So anything that goes beyond that would not cut on your machine, okay? Um, and how did I, did I duplicate? All right, so let me change back my material size to 12 by 12, um, which is what it defaults to. So to change the number of labels, if I wanted to, 
do two or 20. I'm up here in project copies. So you don't have to, I've seen people do this where they have a project like this and they just want to make more than one copy. So in Canvas, they duplicate it, um, which is, is sort of okay. But why don't you just, um, change it to like the 20 or that you want instead of making 20 duplicates on your canvas which gets confusing um, just change your project copy to the 20 that you want and you can cut that one time uh, at 20 and maybe the next time you just want it to be 10 so you can change it to 10 okay but in this case we're going to just do one as sort of a test cut and we're going to go ahead and hit continue. Now, I mentioned that um, the sticker paper that I got, I got from Amazon. And it is, it to me, it's a little thin. Um, it was like, I can put the link in the description of the video. But I got a big box of it. Hi, yes. So I got a big box of this sticker paper. And it was just labeled sticker paper. And I'll, I'll put the... Um, I'll put the link where I got it. I got it on Amazon and, and it didn't it didn't tell me the um the weight of the of the paper and it is matte by the way. To me it seems a little flimsy and then I, I remembered that there's a great outlet for stickers of all colors and um, sorts and sizes that you should um, look into and that is onlinelabel.com um, and there you can choose like a thicker um, sticker comes out a little bit thicker but for this particular case I'm using up my I'm trying to use up my hundred labels that I got um, and I think I paid about fifteen dollars for a hundred labels okay and these labels do go through my uh, printer pretty well the thicker ones, I don't know because um, I have actually ordered, but I haven't got it yet. So, um, so here is just a piece. It's actually a half of a sheet that I'm going to do my test cut on. I'm going to put it on my mat. And here I'm going to choose, actually for my machine, washi paper, um, the setting washi paper is better than sticker paper. Now I, um, I normally would have this in my favorites. And by the way, if you're just new to favorites, it's not functioning altogether correctly right now. So you may not be able to choose favorites at this time, but it should be cleared up fairly soon. But if I wanted to find the washi setting, I'd go to browse all and I can just type in washi, which is, um, it's like a little thinner than sticker paper, but it's still adhesive. It's not like, um, it's not terribly sticky um, and it so it cuts a little bit better to, to me it cuts a little bit better so um, I'm going to put in my pen and I already have my blade in so I'm going to put in here I got to make sure I put my pen in let me move you over so you can see all right so see, I got my pen in and I have my little piece here because I'm only doing one and I'm going to hit go and remember what it does. The first time it goes through, it does the writing first and then the cutting. So it's going to do my John Smith um, and the the whole address label first and then it's going to cut. And by cutting it on washi, I want it to not... Um, cut all the way through like I did with these okay I did these by using sticker paper and it cut through and sometimes I can't remove them from uh, from the backing so it's sort of um, do they have bunkers sticker paper I don't know what bunker sticker paper is should I know what bunker sticker paper is Nancy um, is it something cool and interesting uh, I'd like to know what that is um, but yeah, check out online labels, or you can also obviously go to Amazon because they have everything, but I like to support the smaller businesses whenever I can. I don't think Jeff Bezos needs 
all of my money. <laughs> so, so, so this one I cut on sticker paper and you see what happened? It cut the backing with this. Now this one, these are labels that I did that I cut on um, sticker paper, but I used less pressure. So it kind of cut through, but it didn't on all of it. But I think what I like about it is I can still like kind of peel it like this for my labels. All right. So let's see how this one comes up. Now it's all done doing the writing. So it's going to cut out my label. Let's see how it comes up. Okay, so Nancy, I don't know any of these kinds of sticker papers. She said bunker and vulnerable. If anybody knows about that, maybe I can check it out. So there's my label. Now I did washi setting and I can see that it didn't cut through all the way, but it maybe I would put it on the pressure on low. Let me just show you about pressure. Let's go back. So here is my setting and now that I've done a test cut, I can see, all right, it cut out like this, see? It cut out and left the backing there, but it, it sort of cut through here a little bit. So I wanna make a change in my setting. And to do that, I am going to, either I'm gonna change my material, which you can do by just touching on your material and choosing something else, right? Um, but I like the washi setting. It's better than the sticker paper setting, but I want to kind of change the pressure. And here is where you do it. So pressure, you get a choice of the default pressure. You also get a choice of more or less. And this is a way to sort of, it's kind of like when in the Explore, when they have the wheel and it says cardstock and then cardstock plus, that's sort of what this does, um, is it, it gives you a little bit more pressure, but without having to change the material, okay? So I think I would probably switch it to less. But now that I made my test cut here, I'm going to want to do another test cut, but if I do it with my label in the same place, it's not going to work because I have uh, already cut out. So either I'd have to take this off or I can move my label down so that it will use the bottom of this label. So I open up here under edit and I just move my label down. And then now I can go ahead and recut it with the with the less pressure, same setting, but I've moved it down so it can use my piece of scrap, okay? And then you just go through the same process, putting it in and having it right and cut and check that way, which um, I can go ahead and do, but I don't wanna take up too much of your time. And that is, um, that is sort of labels. Um, you can play with it, a lot, obviously. And you don't just have to do return address labels. You can have little flourishes, whatever you want to do. But this is um, sort of the basics of how to make a label on your maker. Now, obviously, that's different for the Joy. And I think the Joy, there are a couple things that it does fabulously. One of them being the index, um, index, the insert cards. And the other one is labels. It does have a great label making capability. But if you don't want to make a whole lot of labels, or you're perfectly satisfied with your maker or explore and you don't really you know think you need a joy then this is the way to work around it okay um and i think that that is sort of all for today's lesson i do want to point out that what i like about um doing the writing is I don't have to use black, although I do often, and I don't often show you. But remember, the, this is a way you could change it up. So if you're doing Christmas, yes, absolutely, Rosalind, you can make these on the Explore. Um, you can make them on the Maker. It's different for the Joy, okay? And yes, Nancy, you can change the label. You can make vinyl sticker paper, which actually this, uh, what I would 
what I would suggest, Nancy, is I would suggest you get a writable vinyl, like the Smart Label. This is that's that's a big difference, writable vinyl, because if your vinyl is not writable, your all your pans are going to smudge. Okay. All right, everyone. I think that's it for today. Hey, you know what I didn't notice until today? As you can see my dog in the background. <laughs> I didn't realize because he sits in the, in the window. So you get to see the corgi um, there. So thank you so much for coming today. Um, and if you're watching this live, thank you for coming live. And if you're watching on the replay, thanks for watching on the replay. Remember, I'm here Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. live. Um, with a group of my friends. They come here and, and they ask me all kinds of fun questions. And I love that. Um, and I hope you all have a wonderful day and we'll see you again tomorrow at nine. Have a great day. You're welcome, Nancy. Have a great day, everyone. 